it. Push it down. My name is Bob Buchanan. I'm the president of the Rhapsody Woodworkers Association. We're putting on a woodworking show today. Uh, the name of our show is Anything Garden. So we have a bunch of displays here made by members uh, depicting that theme. Uh, the reason we have these woodworking shows is to just let people know in the community that there is such a group out here that makes wooden things and teaches people how to use tools to make toys and wooden items. So today we've got a wide display of wood turning items, uh, scroll sawn items, and flat plane wood items. The table's here showing uh, different items made by individual club members to depict our theme, Anything Garden. So we've got Anything Garden. Gosh, I don't even know what you call that with all the frogs on it. We've got a mushroom bird feeder. We've got some butterfly displays and some some bird displays. Down here we've got garden tools. Welcome to the show and uh, enjoy yourself. My name is Rick Weisbeck and I've been with the club since they started. And uh, mainly what we do is scroll saw work. This is one of my more complicated deals with the Ferris wheel. It's a lot of work. There's about 80 hours worth of work in this Ferris wheel. The things that I like to do is make wooden toys and the moving toys are always fun to make. They're always a big hit. Uh, ever since I've made this one, he's come to every show. He's been a big hit with people around. With the cricket, they're always always very interesting, and the moving toys are, are a lot of fun to have. I made this for my wife last year. She saw it in a magazine and thought it was very nice, so this year she told me I had to bring it back. And everybody that looks at it really likes the vulture. Over on this side, we have more of my scroll saw work. Uh, patterns like this are always more interesting to make. This vase is made in four different pieces and then fit together. And you have to be very good or very lucky when you put it together because you can see through it even though they were cut separately. So that's the precision that you can make with the scroll saw. And uh, you have to just pay attention to detail and following the pattern. The Gatling gun has eight barrels. You can put up to 10 rubber bands per barrel. Normally on a demonstration, I only put about three rubber bands on it just for time constraints, plus the fact that when you get 10 rubber bands on there, it's really hard to turn the wheels. So in order to save my fingers and to save time, we load about three rubber bands on it. And no matter how many you put on it, it takes no time to get rid of them. It's got eight barrels on it, and when you turn the crank, it fires the rubber bands off. In very short order. This is a small computer controlled router. It has a 13 by 25 cutting surface on it, and I've had it for quite a few years. I usually put together a demo for the show so that I can demonstrate the, the computer controlled router. A lot of people, they're becoming more common, more people have them. So it starts out with a drawing on the computer where I draw it up. Then this drawing is converted into what they call a G-code, which is the information that the computer needs in order to run it. When it comes up, it comes up on the computer like this, and it tells the computer where to move that bit from place to place in both X, Y, and Z position. And when you run it, this will tell you that it'd take about eight minutes in order to cut what's on that board right there. Eight minutes worth of cutting, and sometimes it's anywhere from uh, 15 to 20 minutes to draw it, or if it's a more complicated drawing, it can take quite a few, quite a bit of time. The advantage is, is that once you have it drawn and in the computer, you can repeat the cut over and over again without any trouble. So making just one is not cost effective. The more intricate the drawing, the longer it takes because there's more positions that it has to be in. If you're looking at this, 
it'll cut this bee in just a couple of minutes or a minute or so. It'll cut the ladybug also fairly quickly. But as it's starting right now, it's starting with this pattern, which has a lot more information in it. So this is the majority of the eight minutes is going to be spent on this position, and the other two will cut fairly quickly. My name is Corey Weisbeck, and I'm part of the woodworkers group. I've been doing woodworking most of my life in some fashion or another. One of the things I really love about woodworking is not just its creative components, uh, where I can do my own designs, such as um, this little one I designed myself and then cut out of maple. One of the things I really love about woodworking is all of the different types of woods. I don't have to paint anything. I don't have to stain anything. If I find the right wood, I get the color that I want. And that's what I've done with part of my display this year, where you can see this exact same pattern of frog cut out but in all of the different types of woods. None of these woods have stain. They have no additional color. These are the colors of the wood. And this is just one of my favorite things about the woodworking. Every time I turn around, there's a different type of wood with a different creative component of its own to speak to my creative component. So that's definitely one of my favorite things about this hobby. Hi, I'm Rex Briggs. And I, 35 years old, fell into wood turning, and it has been a way of trying to maintain my sanity. Sometimes I win and sometimes I lose, but um, all these pieces are just times when I can lose myself in my shop, uh, work with some of what God gives us already created, and I just have a chance to repurpose it. So it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to have this hobby, and I'm... I'm really quite grateful that I can have it. This is a piece that I brought back from Michigan. We don't have a whole lot of hardwoods here in, in the Rapid City area or in South Dakota, so most of our hardwoods we have to buy from someplace else. Um, the only piece that I have that's local is this one here. It's a cottonwood burl, and then I put a walnut rim on the top of it. Um, this is from Michigan. This is just a piece of maple, but it's dense and gorgeous. Um, this is called a natural edge with the bark still on it. This is from the Northwest horse chestnut and also has the natural edge because it's this pointing means that it's burled. Um, kind of takes a character of its own. This is a piece that I got. It's a spalted piece of cherry and uh, I love wormholes and other things that give it character, kind of like human beings. When we have imperfections, it, it gives it character. So um, I was a therapist for many years, and now it's kind of, I, I still like things that are less than perfect. Otherwise, I could never accept myself. My name is Jim Burke. I'm with the Rapid City Woodworkers Association, and we're here at Connects uh, with our annual show. And these are some of the items that I brought to the show to, to display. I do a lot of what they call layered cutting, where you take a piece and you cut uh, one piece out, and then you put what they call a backer plate on it, and it makes everything stand out. So here's just some of my work. This is actually out of Aspen um, from here in the Black Hills that I've shaved down to quarter-inch thick and made the layered cuts with. Some other mediums I do is... Uh, this is actually four layers of plywood, and then uh, I've actually added some color to it just to make things stand out a little more. So this is one of my larger items. Um, it's made out of redwood, and then it's been sealed with an outdoor uh, waterproofing sealant. And what it is is right now it's, it's made into a bench. And you grab it and pull it out. Then it folds out into a picnic table, so it's ideal for people that have smaller decks. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of room when it's made into the bench, and if you need the extra room, you can fold it out into the picnic table. I'm Patrick McGough, and I do work here in town. And this is all, all this stuff is done on CNC that you're seeing here. It's done with a CNC router, and this is what it looks like when it comes out of the machine. And here's a video on this bolt that's being made right here. 
My name is Danny Green and I'm a member of the Woodworkers Club here and my forte I guess you'd say is wood turning. It's what I enjoy doing the most and right now I'm turning a box elder burl bowl and just getting it finished. So that's what I'm in the process of doing now. As far as the club goes, we've got a whole bunch of people in here that do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I actually have a special interest group that meets at my house for wood turning. And there's a dozen, dozen guys or more that uh, all get together on a Saturday and spend a couple hours learning stuff from each other. This machine is a variable speed lathe and with this chuck I can turn spindles, I can turn bowls, I can turn platters up to 10 inches wide. And this is a small one. The, the ones that we use in the turning group, they are quite a bit larger. We can do 16 inch bowls, plates, that kind of stuff different styles of turning for everybody. I prefer turning bowls myself, bases. One of the other guys likes turning spindles, candlesticks, uh, mallets, and all kinds of different things. Hi. I'm Patsy Hood, a member of the Rapid City Woodworkers Association, and right now we are showing what we call a toy demonstration, toy building. The kids this year are building ladybugs. What we do every year is have uh, what we call a theme for our woodworking show, and this year it was anything garden. So if you look here, we've got ladybugs that they're coloring, and then we're going to put wheels on them so then they can take them home and play for them. And we also have a racetrack. They can get together and race them down. But every year we do give many, many toys away here, and we also give them away at Christmas time. It's our thrill to do this for the kids. We really love them and love doing this, and the kids love getting them. <laughs> you should see. Yeah, we love it. It's awesome. My name is Raleigh Lind, and uh, I've been in the group uh, about 12 years or since the thing began. And uh, these are the kind of stuff that I do now, but as a kid, when I started out, I started out with a jackknife that I borrowed from my dad making things. And I just let it develop up until I make what I want to or what I can put in my head as a vision. This thing here is a jigsaw puzzle that I've made to uh, let people use or have or whatever the case may be. And, uh, but I've, I've always been into wood. This here is part of a, a little creation that I come up with on my own that uh, the center part come out of the block of wood. And all this other stuff here, the stuff over here is all mine. And, and I do a lot of it on my scroll saw here. This one here, and that scroll saw over there is mine. And the band saw is mine. And I, I like to use the band saw on some stuff. But my but, but, but preference anymore, I give up working on furniture because it got too heavy. And uh, I work mostly with the scroll saw stuff now and enjoy every minute of it, enjoy the group, enjoy what we do. This, uh, I put together, oh, four or five years ago, and I've guarded it with my life because it is very fragile. And uh, it's uh, something that I got out of a magazine. It was much smaller, so I used a photocopier to make it larger. And then I cut this out, and it uh, it's fragile no matter where I where I have it, I, and I, I enjoy it. But the time I spent on it, I have no idea. 
And I, at the time I spend on all my stuff, I don't have any idea because I just do it for the enjoyment. The pattern, it tells you how thick a wood to use. And I just laid it down and what, what we do is take the piece of wood and uh, we'll stick a uh, painter's tape on it, t- tape all over it, and then we spray that with contact cement, and then we'll take a photocopy of this and stick it on the contact cement, and then we'll just cut out on the lines there. And it gets tricky, and uh, you get down some of these places, like it gets, the saw blade will move on you if you're not careful. So uh, how much time I've got in it? I can't tell you because I don't, I don't do it to see if I can make any money out of it or anything. I do it because it's, it's therapy for me. I'm Jeff Albrecht. I live in Brookings, South Dakota. Um, been turning wood after high school, took a hiatus for 20 years and then got back into turning wood and been doing it the last probably 10 years. Um, great hobby, time consuming, but very rewarding. Um, some of the fun part is is where the wood comes from. Um, we got a piece of walnut that came out of Missouri. Uh, this one's out of that same log, um, rescued out of a firewood pile. The commercial cutters don't want the crotches and the, the Ys. Um, what, and that's where the pretty um, grain of the wood is. Um, some South Dakota wood would be something like these. Um, This one is cut out of this one. If you look real close, the grain lines up. Some old fence posts from Perkins County come off the the prairie up there. These are my, it's a drunken bowl they call it. You can use logs, um, segmented turning. You know, our favorite fishing spot's Michigan and we picked up a piece of beach up there to turn so that's pretty much where we're at um as i said a great hobby the woodworkers are always willing to share techniques wood um you name it they share it and it's a good good hobby to be in yeah i'm lon ghost uh from rapid city here and i'm an old tool collector uh this is part of my old tool collection i brought up here uh, some interesting ones. I got a double claw hammer here that was used for old times when they used need more leverage to pull a nail out. They had two claws, one uh, offset from the other, so they have more power. Here's another one that took me about three years to figure out what it was, and uh, for a farmer's used it to notch pigs' noses so they wouldn't root in the ground quite so much. It's an idea, but it just never, ever really took off. Uh, another tool we have here is one that we use for uh, the old Model A's when they had a, a rain gutter around the top of the car so the rain wouldn't drive, uh, fall down into the car. But they used to haul everything and they'd tie stuff on top of the car and it would smash them gutters down. And this car, they... Uh, machine they'd go around with it and straighten them all back up again to keep the water on top of the car so it wouldn't run down in the door on them. Uh, here we have an old stair uh, saw. It only, it only cut about a half inch deep when they made stairs to put the threads in. Uh, now, of course, they use all power tools for this stuff. This is two of my 14... Uh, boards that I have at home. Uh, these are some of the more oddball tools I have. Uh, a lot of people were interested in seeing them. They didn't know what they were. I do have some unusual ones. This happens to be a saw set. There's probably a hundred different kinds of them and this is an oddball one that i would never seen before that I got here just the last year. My dad started collecting these back in his 50s and 60s. He had just a few of them, and when he passed away, I took over, and I've been uh, collecting ever since then. Uh, I have probably, oh, 1,500 tools at home, all old ones, 
some of them are doubles I got more than one of. Uh, I can't really remember all that I have, so sometimes I pick up a same one that I already got. But otherwise, uh, I still find some today that I haven't seen before, and the history behind them is what's fun about collecting old tools. Some of these tools were uh, really ingenious that people invented back then, and other ones were just wild ideas that really never took off. So a lot of people were interested in seeing them, and uh, old people come and say, oh yeah, I remember that, I used to have that. When I was a kid, we had this and that. And, uh, so it's just really fun to, to uh, collect them all and, and to explain it to the old people what they are if they never had them.